This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast episode 319. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to get geeky. Talk tech with you right here from the studio here, the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. We're back from our, our uh, you can check out our, our trip out to Smokey's Tavern as part of the great part of the great pod crawl that happened Friday night in Millville, PA, along with our friends at the River's Edge. Uh, with me, he survived that as well. He had fun on the pod crawl. It was John Chichilla, ChillaTech.net, Gadget Guru of Big Bank International Incorporated, DBA. <laughs> DBA, Esquire. How's it going today? Awesome, awesome. Uh, great to be back in the element, in our places. You're in your own studio over there in Studio C, of course. And uh, things are going fine here in Studio A. We're good. We don't think there's any drunks that are going to be wandering into the studio and asking me about Archer. Uh, so <laughs> there's that. I left it in. I just left the whole thing in. I don't. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm like, this is what happened, guys. I don't even know how to handle it. The best part was when Doug was like, like, like Doug really stuck the the knife to the guy because he's wearing an Archer shirt and he says, you know, Archer's canceling this year. <laughs> We're lucky he didn't flip the table over. We are a little bit lucky at that, so yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Go check that out. It, it was an awesome cast special edition that should be in your feeds uh, from this past week, from Friday night, actually. Uh, just an awesome cast uh, special pod crawl. And check out about a 30-minute video with our friend Douglas Durda from Should I Drink That? Dot com. As I said, this is the Awesome Cast. You can join us every week live.awesomecast.net. And also, if you follow us on the Facebook, we are doing Facebook Live for our stream now. So you can even comment with that. I got it up on my screen right here if anybody's commenting on the Facebook uh, video. And uh, we've been doing a lot of fun stuff with Facebook video uh, lately. And maybe I'll talk a little bit more about that after the project is complete next week. But in the meantime, uh, you can also check us out at awesomecast.net. Dot net. That's where you can subscribe to the show on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music. All the links are over there for you to uh, uh, hit up hit up and subscribe and rate and review, please, uh, if you're enjoying the show. Uh, we really appreciate it if you do. Uh, you know, Rating and reviewing it uh, usually helps uh, get the show out there in front of more people. And you can also check out the awesome chat. We just talked talk, talk to uh, Deco Resources, and we'll be talking to a graduate of Academy Pittsburgh. Uh, this week and uh, next week we're going to talk about the guys uh, talk with the guys uh, behind replay FX so stay tuned for that and we got a few more um, talking with some uh, great companies from Alpha Lab for future editions of that awesomecast.net and follow us on uh, uh, Twitter Facebook awesomecast YouTube and Facebook for the video versions of the show and you can uh, also support the show monetarily and the page is reloading there you go don't know why that happened uh patreon.com slash awesome cast thanks to our uh supporter mike michael fedor uh at the five dollar level the executive producer of this show and actually we're rolling out some stuff and might have some new levels new new goals for the show we actually have some goals we're rolling out as in i just got how much it is for us to move the lips in <laughs> so that's a goal guys uh, so maybe you guys can help us out there uh between this and the wrestling mayhem show maybe we can get uh, to to one of those points, um, can I do split goals? Do you think that's a thing? Like like if we have an X number goal, like that we can spread across both shows, like like that'll work, right? Yeah, sure. I don't see why not. Sure, like a network of Patreons, right? So thank you so much at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. Shout outs for that. If you guys uh, contribute the dollar or more, we'll, we'll we'll put your name right there on the video feed as well and get you some other goodies. Uh, just like business cards, and sometimes we send you cookies. Not going to say when, not going to say if, but sometimes in certain holidays we'll send you cookies. Or I'll just show up at your door. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> warning. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's get into it. Oh, hey, speaking of River's Edge, uh, we are there live every Tuesday. I forget this every week. I, I know. It, it's not. It, it's the newest thing. 
Uh, River's Edge, we are there. We're a, a proud part of that network. A great 24-7 Pittsburgh-based radio station. We are there Tuesday. I'm sorry. This is Tuesday. Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. River's Edge, PGH.com. After Funny Money. Go check out. Check out all, all the other great stuff there. Uh, uh, Sorgatron Media actually also also provides fishing without bait to them as well, which I think is on Sunday mornings. Check the schedule over there, riversedgepgh.com. A great slew of shows they have working on over there. So let's get into it with our awesome things of the week. Chilla, I think we're going to talk about Google things. Probably. I think it was a big day. It was a big day over at Google HQ. Once you get past the AI explanations and the machine learning, and hey, we beat that guy at Go, Go that one time. It was a little more to it. I actually was like cleaning the car while I was listening to it. To be honest, <laughs> I just like you know what that, that that's that's but I got stuff I need to do. Uh, but uh, uh, so, what did you think was the most interesting thing of the day? So the 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 most interesting thing of the day for me is the home device. Mm-hmm. So Google Home is their living room concept that's a speaker, a microphone. Air freshener. What? Air fre- Not an air freshener. A speaker, microphone, um, and kind of all around monitor for the room. I, I, so what you can do is you can say, you can ask it a question. It can return you information. You can, you can say, um, play such and such on Spotify, do this, do that, load up this um, Netflix, and it actually, you tell it what Chromecast to then send that data to. So it's a, it's a pretty neat concept. I feel like I'm not sure how much I would use the device without a Chromecast mm-hmm. um, because a lot of, it's going to speak to you answers and but if you really want to see anything, you have to tell it to you know, bring it up on the TV in the living room or show me in the bedroom, whatever. Um, I think it's a really cool idea. The thing that really interests me, and we've talked about this before on the show, is now to use a Chromecast, I don't have to have a phone. You can talk to I it with this I can device. Talk to it. And the other impressive thing that I've been seeing a lot in, in the hands-on reviews. Um, is that, you know, you can crank the thing up and the volume can be pretty, pretty loud in the room and it's still able to understand, um, out of the box, it's going to work with things like the Nest thermostats, uh, Samsung smart things, Philip Hue lights, anything powered by this, this, then that, um, they're working with Pandora, Spotify, YouTube music, tune in, iHeart radio, um, so, so it's it's definitely getting its its integration points. Um, I kind of like the concept better than the Alexa, from what I've seen. The other thing is, is obviously there's a, there's actually a mute button on the back, so it can't it, to kind of tell it to stop listening um, at any point in time. I think you can kind of drag your finger in a circle clockwise or counterclockwise to, to turn it up or turn it down. Um, which I thought was a pretty neat thing. You can also say, you know, volume up, volume down, pause, mute, et cetera. Um, pretty, pretty cool device. If you ask me, like I said, I, I, I feel like they should have created a kit out of some of their stuff today and, and, and paired this with a, a Chromecast. Maybe they figure enough people already have the Chromecast. I don't know, but it's, it's definitely also takes a run at, at kind of like your Sonos because it does have its own built-in speaker and they're claiming the quality is pretty good. You could put these all over your house um, and then kind of say, play whatever in, in this room, that room, and the other room. You could have different music going on in different rooms. Um, I, I didn't get to see a portion of this presentation. I don't know if they replayed the commercial that they that they showed at I.O., which I thought was very well done. It was the family getting ready for the day. Um, but it, all in all, I, I think this was my favorite device. I think it's it's building on what others have done, but also at a lower price point. It, 
pre-orders start at 129. Um, the the trick for me is do I want to splinter and fracture my my already evolving <laughs> house because you are intelligence. in the future now for yes. me I live in the Google world despite my iPhoneage and my my Macs I very very much live in the Google world so that this can be sat in my home or several places in my home and and now I can talk to Google I can talk to the Google um because when we'll, we'll get into the phone bits but how they have the personal assistant and I was like, well, that's not something that I'm going to be able to take advantage of because I'm not going to get that phone, right? And a lot of people won't. But this is a way into it. And it seems to, it feels like it has the promise of what Alexa was, except um, I don't simply, I don't simply have the ability to order kitty litter whenever I want, right? I can do other things. I can do more productivity things. I can do more home control things, at least with my Chromecast, which now I have two. Uh, thanks to thanks to the, the, some events of this past weekend, uh, and, and, and this is it, 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 it's, it, it still works on like if you have an old Chromecast, it still works, right? Like it, it just looks for Chromecast. It's, it's pretty universal. Yes. <laughs> Actually, side note, I was looking since I picked up the new Chromecast uh, for 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 an event that uh, it's actually not much different in sides. Um, it actually has less RAM or less storage than the first when I was hmm. looking up specs. If they're if they're if the specs I'm looking at were right, so it's just a different form factor, you know whatnot. But um, I think that's cool because now I can throw this in in a couple places in the house. It does control something like that, and yeah, I can start. I'm not in the position with you where I'm, I was kind of ahead of, ahead of the curve on stuff for 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 home automation, but I can start building out from this, and it feels like a good point because Apple doesn't have anything yet. But uh, but if this thing if this thing works out as advertised, and I, I want to wait, I'm not I'm definitely not going to be an early adopter on this one. Uh, but uh, if, if it works as advertised and as well as the Amazon Echo, man, this is a consideration. It starts at $129, I believe. I'm going to try to get the specs on that uh, real quick. Uh, but uh, this this does look promising. It, it it has more hooks in it than than Amazon, I think, initially does. Right. Um, Amazon's initially, I would say yes, but Amazon has grown exponentially from launch of, of all of the stuff. Of course, but they, they integrate with, but, but I, yeah, I would say at launch. Yes. They're, 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 they're definitely have but is, more. Is, is more Amazon homes. able to hook into my calendar for instance? I think there are, depending on what your calendar's in. Yes. I, mm-hmm. I want to say that it, that it, it does. So. And I think it goes across some, across some platforms. Right. Uh, hey, we don't live in, in a material world. Sorg lives in a Google world. Yes, it's Google. It's Google's world. I just uh, work here. Uh, but anyways, show titles, by the way. Somebody write those down. Um, but no, I you know I, I think this is. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to have the power to take off because my 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 thing with it is Amazon Echo is. It's kind of got that built-in audience, right? Like if I'm an Amazon person, and a lot of people are as far as their shopping goes, they're kind of getting, um, you know, kind of bombarded with this, right? And, and, and Echo starts at fifty dollars for the dot. I was actually kind of considering. In fact, they have the order six buy get one free, kind of like the tablets back in the day. Um, which actually, I think you can still get that with the uh, the lower Amazon uh, tablet. But uh, I don't know if I, if I'm going to pick one, I'm going to go with the Google. I, I just feel like it's going to have more, not openness, but more opportunity for use. And that's where so that's where I wonder: are they going to? Are you going to start to see where you talk about more openness? Maybe within the Google verse, is this a way for them to start to move people? And and kind of start to build the wall up around that garden, mm-hmm. right? So I'm wondering, are we going to see more? Hey, this works better with the home product, and this is a the home product connects to these Google services, and we're not going to connect to Microsoft services, or you know, after a while, they they start to kill the iHeartRadio and push you towards their their music platform 
I don't know. I, I I find it hard to believe unless they're getting the third parties to write the hooks that they're going to want to keep expanding into these other areas. And, and one of the things that also worries me about this is, and I hope, I hope lots of people buy them. I, I hope they sell like hotcakes because I think this will really push the market. What also concerns me about this is, and it wouldn't be the first time Google's done it, is if this thing doesn't sell, don't plan on getting support for it over about a year. So you want to see what the momentum is before you really get into this, right? Yeah. Let me look at the. I I, I liked the Q. Mm-hmm. I liked Which the Q. Which was the precursor to basically what we know of as Chromecast. No, the Q was ran Android, and it wasn't just a streamer. The Q was full blown interface. Then they actually took another run at the Android TV. Um, and then shortly after that, they discontinued that one too. Mm-hmm. Remember, they, they I think even before the Q, they what was it the LG made a view that had the pass through HDMI. Okay, that, you, that you ran some of the stuff. So, so, so they like they the took ma- multiple runs at that at that TV market, mm-hmm. and every time they only gave it eight to twelve months before they just threw in the towel. Chromecast is interesting to me, but I go back to. I can't give someone a remote with a menu to go through Chromecast and fire stuff up. You know what I mean? Right. I like, I like that Android. I'm not going to lie. I like the Android experience when it comes to, to that interface. Okay. And, and, and when you look at companies like um, NVIDIA has kind of like a shield TV, I think it is. That's a really nice device. I, I'm hoping this, becomes a gateway and becomes that menuing system for Chromecast where I don't have to go back to my phone all the time. Right. Right. I mean, for you think about it, it's the CW. I mean, CW is going free across all those platforms and it already has Chromecast, Apple TV, um, and some other streamers, like Roku, I think. Um, you're going to be able to fire that up without a, without a cable um, membership and, I mean, to me, this is the perfect way to watch that content. Right, right, exactly. Um, I, I, interesting. I, 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 I'm going to be keeping a close eye on it. I imagine you're going to get your hands on it probably early on, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I'm definitely going to... This is the one that I'm going to peg as probably the one that will end up in my home. Or maybe just picking up a $50 dot, right? Uh, so we'll see. The Chromecast thing is kind of the center for me. So we'll see what we can do with that. Um, so Google announced a few other things. Um, of course, we'll get to the phone, as I mentioned. But I think the other, my awesome thing, because the thing I've been looking for, you know, I'm loving the VR stuff. We brought we had Frizz playing with the uh, Samsung Gear VR for the first time. You can check out the, uh, we did a Facebook Live. I, what did I do that? Did I do that on AwesomeCast or, or, or my own, probably my own page, actually? Um, so look, look me up over on Facebook and there should be a Facebook live from about Saturday over at work hard. Um, so I was kind of expecting something like the gear VR, right? Like something, something like the gear VR. And I'm like, okay, they have a little bit of experience cause they've done Google cardboard for a while. Right. What we got, I didn't realize how much of a half breed between Google cardboard and gear VR. This was going to be chilla. This is pretty amazing. It's made of cloth. It's made of fabric. I, I, it's, it's, it's really, I know that's, that doesn't do it justice, but, but it, it's, it's a soft thing. It, 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 it's, it's what they said, like, like furniture manufacturers they worked with or clothing or something like that. I think it was a clothing manufacturer. It, 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 so your phone fits in it and they say, well, it automatically adjusts your phone for fitting in there. It, it's uh, soft, comfortable, and lightweight. So it's not this big plastic thing on your face that's going to make you sweat. Right. That was one thing they pushed for a lot of space for glasses. And as, as the twist stream was saying, also for those of you out there with mascara, it won't smear that either. It comes with a remote control. So right off the bat, you got like we kind of uh, functionality going on with this. So it's not that, oh, I forgot to charge or get my really cheap uh, game pad to play gun jack. Uh, right out the box, right? Um, and 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 some of it's like, oh, you can do YouTube and do this and 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 uh, 
uh, Street View and stuff, which is again, you know, stuff they're basically kind of upgrading from the Google Cardboard experience. So, like when they're like, "Hey, we brought Hulu and Netflix and and all this stuff to you guys," it's like, it, 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 I kept yelling at the screen parody at that point. Um, it's going to retail for seventy five, seventy nine dollars, I believe they said. Uh, several colors. Um, it's actually going to. I think Verizon is giving it to you when you pre-order the the Pixel through them. Um, so, man, I it seems like the perfect um, in between again of you know between the Gear VR and, and the cardboard. This is when we we talk about accessible virtual reality. This feels like it. Now it's support right out of the box for Pixel. Did they announce other phones for this yet? For compatibility? Not that I, not that I heard. I don't see anything on the website just yet. The, the, the early talk about this, because um, I think they, they did discuss this at Google I.O. Like briefly, so, right? So, so at I.O. they said there would be a certification program and there would be a, a, a number of vendors supporting this in late 2016 and as we go into 2017 so which is supposed to include the iphone yes i, I don't know did. is that iphone 7 will that include the 6s probably just the 7 to be quite honest um i would think it would be so if you look at i mean how samsung handled this right and they're doing it all device side they went all the way back to the six, so I would right. think that the iPhone would be able to go back but to at I, least the six S, if I not the six. Feel like because one of the big things about this is they're they're pushing the idea that, uh, you know, it's a because they were talking about it being a higher resolution. Which if you play the Samsung, you're like that's not a great resolution. It's good, don't get me wrong. It's a it's a good experience, but it's not definitely it's definitely not the best. Now I'm curious what you get out of this thing. Um, again, we're still kind of marrying the phone with basically lenses, right? Um, so okay, sure. So I wonder. So so from a from a screen resolution perspective, and let's just put this in perspective. Um, the Pixel comes in at 441 PPI. Okay. The I, the iPhone Seven is at 326. The Galaxy S7 is 577. So there's there's a couple things that Google talked about today that really make me wonder what's really going on on the back end. Mm -hmm. Because here, the, the Galaxy S7, the LG G5, and the HTC 10 all have better screen resolution than the Pixel. So despite this being their flagship crazy god phone for Google... Doesn't really stack up to yeah, and it, and things it's already only on the market. Through it full full HD, yeah. Where you got your Samsungs doing quad HD through their, their Super AMOLED. You, you got LG doing the quad HD IPS LCD with Quantum. I mean, Apple calls theirs Retina. So I'm not real certain about those other devices not being able to do this because when you look at the guts of a lot of current phones and you look at what it can do and the speeds, like the CPU in that device is on par with the S7 and the G5, but the CPU in the iPhone 7 is faster. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll, 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 we'll it'll so be curious I, I, to see. You know, I think it, it'll be interesting to see and how much are they taking care of things on the back end when they, when they talk about their camera. And I know megapixels and and whatnot are are aren't everything, but the but even the f stops from a from a shooting in 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 low light. Well, you know what the, the iPhone has a lower f stop than the than the the Pixel. In the meantime, I, I know I'll still be able to experience the original Google VR experience of the uh, Google Cardboard made lovingly by hand by our friends in Germany from Splash. Uh, so thank you, guys. Uh, what do you think of the look of the device I, and, and how you think it's going to feel versus the 
soft. The, um, it's gonna, the galaxy. It's going to feel like the warm towel. It's going to feel like the warm towel because the phone's going to heat up. <laughs> it's going to feel like the warm towel uh, experience I had at Sports Clips. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Krauss. He's saying it looks like a face sock. <laughs> yeah. See, I actually liked the look. It's it's and different. The, the other thing I was thinking is it's going to be a lot lighter. Yeah. Oh, that's big. That's big. It's not going to feel like it's pulling down your face. Not that I think right. that that experience is pretty, like, is, is hard on the other ones, but it's still, like, there is weight to it, and it's something that you have to adapt to. So, um, oh. well, there's plenty of other things that happen at uh, the Google announcement, and we have a few other stories and some aw- an awesome thing of the week from Alex. I definitely want to try to get in here. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to give a shout-out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, Slice on Broadway, SliceOnBroadway.com, right here in Beachview. They just completed their first season at PNC Park for their newest location. Uh, I saw they were celebrating that earlier this week. Um, have the pizza people, like, uh, joined in on the pierogi race, the pizza and pierogi race, like, maybe, you know? I, I was hoping there would be some conflict there, but apparently not. Um, but check them out. They're there, as well as Main Street down in Carnegie, PA, uh, and right here in Beachview on the tracks. You can sit up there on the second floor and watch the train go by. It's one of my favorite pastimes here in the neighborhood. Uh, check them out. Slice on Broadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. And also, Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. You'll be hungry, too. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. They just made their debut on CBS KDK today. Oh, really? Uh, today in Pittsburgh, I believe the show is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there was like a big stack of pizzas on set. I was looking at pictures of uh, uh, that they were posting on their social media today. So that was pretty cool. I'm going to put my Google Cardboard down because we're done talking about that kind of stuff. Hey, can I talk on? Uh, I want to touch on Alex's uh, awesome thing of the week here. Um, I, I, I didn't get a chance to look at it entirely. I hope you, you did. Um, yes, I, I, I did. So, so, uh, and then we'll get back to the Google talk, of course. Alex Carr is our buddy out in uh, uh, the greater L.A. area. I guess we can say he's up in the mountains. He's dealing with Wi-Fi issues. Maybe he needs a Google Wi-Fi. I don't know. Um, but he's dealing with this. This is a $30 tablet. He said it's, a, it's, it's basically just a really cheap drawing tablet. Tablet? Tablet. Tablet? Sure. The Huion, <clears throat> Huion, H-U-I-O-N, uh, H420 <laughs> USB graphics drawing tablet board kit. Uh, so he, he's been uh, uh, working with that for a bit. He's, a, of course, a graphic designer. Uh, helped us with, of course, IndieWrestling.us and the logo for that. Uh, so <laughs> I'm loving the title options. They're already popping up in Slack uh, and, the, and the chat room. Uh, but he says, nope, that was a part about his upgrade. Um, so it's been pretty good so far. Yeah, so go check that out. If you're looking for a drawing tablet that, that that'll interface with you, I think he is a he is he is a Mac person, so it does work with that. It says it works as far back as Windows 7, Mac OS, or OS X uh, 10.8. Uh, so in you know Photoshop, Illustrator, Fireworks, Fireworks, um, um, Corel Painter, Corel Draw, all, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Macaroni Flash, really? I saw that. I saw that Flash is in the uh, deprecated. Uh, uh, things when I was when I was pulling up my Adobe Encore so I could author DVDs the other day. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> thank you, Creative Crowd. You're you're really awesome. Uh, but uh, sorry, Chilla. No, I was gonna say that not only is the the price at the right point to me for this. It's a thirty dollar kind of drawing tablet. It reminds me of some of the the more basic Wacom tablets with the the stylus and the stylus. And this one has two different buttons on it. Um, that I'm guessing allow you to do some different things and things like Photoshop or apps like Photoshop. I, I was pretty impressed though. You get four, four spare digital pen tips with this. So, I mean, device is definitely going to have its longevity as mm-hmm. you use it. It looks like there's three kind of hot buttons on the side. That's probably going to let you switch tools depending on what application you're in. Um, it does have a tip removal tool that comes with it and it comes with a nice sleeve to carry along with you. Um, it looks like it's it's uh, USB of some sort on the edge there. I can't I can't see, but uh, these devices are really nice. And then to me, this is this is the perfect perfect tool to see if you want to go down the path of using drawing tablets like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I I found it was it takes a little bit of time getting used to, um, because you aren't drawing on. You kind of have to look up and you're trying to match where you are on the tablet 
versus where you are on the screen type thing, but very, very cool. It's like there's awareness issue, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit. So, yeah, thanks for that. Go check it out. We'll have the link. uh, I should have the link over on the uh, show notes so you guys can check it out. And please, uh, there's links on there for Amazon. Uh, You don't get a lot through it or anything, but if you want to support the show, just click on the link through Amazon or if you want to pick this thing up. And we do get uh, a percentage kickback. Not that we've ever received much of anything, but uh, but may you never know if you guys uh, uh, grab a couple of those, maybe that will be worthwhile. So, hey, let's talk a little bit. I just saw some of the other stories we really need to get to. Um, okay, real quick, real quick. Because I don't think there's too much to say about these uh, extra things. Chromecast, of course, was upgraded. I don't feel bad that I bought the uh, the latest Chromecast last Friday now. Since this one's coming out in November and it's a 4K one, why would I buy a 4K one for $60, $70? Uh, so don't feel bad about that. Although, okay, it's getting upgraded. Great, there's an option. I like that there's these levels of options. You got the audio one, you got your video one. You got your um, you got your 4K one, makes sense, right? Yeah, it, it, I don't have any 4K devices, so it's not something that I'm who I'm does really looking for right now. But maybe one day. I think my dad has a 4K TV. He lives out in the middle of nowhere and has Direct TV, and like that's his only option. I don't even know if Direct, <laughs> does Direct TV even do 4K. Uh, that I don't like, know. It hardly did SD, all right. So I I, I don't know. Uh. Anyways, uh, I mean, they're accessible. If you're buying a new TV, like, within the past six months, you may end up with a 4K TV, but, eh, And even you, you hook this up, where, where are you really getting to? And how's your bandwidth, buddy? I don't even think I... I, I have Fios, and I, I don't even think I have enough bandwidth uh, to do 4K with what I have. All right. Google did a phone. And this is... The Nexus has always been uh, manufactured by somebody else. I, I know the Nexus tablet I have is an Asus device. Uh, we've had everything from Huawei, LG, Motorola stuff. This is manufacturers. This is, and this is the big headline of the stuff we're, we've been pulling a lot of this info from. This is from the made from made by Google uh, line, the Chromecast line, the, 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 the VR, now the phone, the Pixel phone. We've had a Pixel tablet. We've had the Pixel laptop. I thought it's a Pixel tablet or a laptop once, when I was picking up my my Google Glass, so shows you how popular those things are. But uh, yeah, so so it's the Pixel. Uh, it, it's on Verizon. It can be unlocked for everybody else. It's about uh, seven hundred dollars to start. Um, comes in two sizes. Both sizes are the same thing. It's not that weird thing like the uh, what was it the six P and five X or something like that um, it, it, that that we had with the next the last round of Nexus. Uh, specs look good. We well, were just talking about that, even though the resolution, not even like kind of roughly up to snuff with some of the other stuff. Uh, what do you think, Jella? I, the, the colors caught me. <laughs> Ooh, it's a uh, colorful phone. <laughs> well, no, the, the, so they have quiet black, very I silver like, and really blue. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. What, <laughs> let's talk about these names. Okay. <laughs> I thought they were messing with me and they're like, no, it's actually, it's actually blue and black and white. Right. But it was like, it was like very blue. What? Um, I, like, like it's like, it's like they started making fun of Apple and their weird space gray and just black color and everything like that that we've had over the years, right? But then they forgot it was a joke and just kind of kept running with it, right? Yeah, it was definitely different for to see something like this from them the, the other thing that's kind of surprised me is that i think you touched on it you can get it on verizon or unlocked or on google fi which i don't understand why they're only putting it in with verizon early on well, um, well I, I think i think because the the stream i was listening to for, for twitter was like yeah, i'm disappointed it's only with verizon no 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 it's gonna be provided by Verizon. You can get it like with all the contracty stuff with Verizon, right? But it's still an unlocked phone. It, it's still or you can get it still as an unlocked phone. You can still get it for Project Fi. It's still accessible. Like I can pick it up and use it for AT&T, right? Correct. Right. And, and, you just and whoever can't pick it up at the AT&T store. Right. And, and and I think that's okay and I think like Verizon was just the first one they got to deal with, right? I, I don't I don't know how they I don't know if Verizon said we want the exclusive. Um, I, I don't know. 
So uh, it'll be interesting to see that. And, no, now, okay. The thing that worries me about this is like variety. So, so Nougat came out, um, launched six weeks ago. Right. And Verizon's Nexus device is made by Motorola. It got its update this week. Oh, wow. Wow. It's a ne- Nexus device. Okay. Here's where I think, brand new. here's where I think the Verizon thing makes sense. Um, I, 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 I happened to be a couple of years ago uh we talked about it on this show uh there was a blogger event down at our friends at tech shop um check them out an awesome chat we had a good uh, uh talk with the last down there um and they were they wanted us to know about their technology initiatives right you go to a verizon wireless store it's not just verizon phones right it, it's fios mm-hmm. it's connected home and stuff like that and then you would now have google in there google phones I, I, I want to say, in a, uh, a go, uh, I think all this stuff will be out by then. Go, go to a Verizon store around Christmas. I would be surprised if you do not see a Google Everything kiosk that includes the Google Home, that includes the Google Wi-Fi, that includes that, that ecosystem thing. I, I think that's where, because Verizon promotes wireless technologies that also work on again their fios their 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 lte network um so i you know, bluetooth right so i think it like the the whole made by google philosophy may kind of fit in to the verizon one too and they may sell stuff through there that's my thought that's my theory that's my absolute theory and it's very possible that the other thing that i that i like is is them kind of embedding duo and allo into the oh, into the device making it more embedded um, a lot of people complain today why am i going to go to allo to send a message because i have to send text messages out of my my standard text messaging app and then i have to go to allo to do allo to allo i hope google forces everyone down this path um if they don't i do worry to i do worry about is this just going to be another android device that works a lot different than every other android device and that i i I think they need to get some some ubiquity across the platform right right we'll see we'll see and of course google wi-fi i don't know i mean it, it seemed like it was their kind of upgrade from was it an upgrade from the last thing that they they, they put out with Wi Fi? What was I'm sorry. What was that? The Google Wi Fi is it really much of an upgrade from what they, they they talked about just a few months ago with their their kind of hub router? I guess. I think this is because it has some additional intelligence in it, um, and the, the two ports. One of the things that they talked about is that devices aren't very good at switching from one access point to another. Oddly enough, iPhones are good at this. Um, but the device itself monitors the connection strength and will actually boot a, a device with weak signal off and push it to another hub where it knows it will have better signal. I right. think the other thing is, is this is all, um, it'll be controlled the same way the on hub via smart uh, phone app. Um, one Ethernet internet access. So, so to me, this is a pared down one too. So you can get three of these for three hundred bucks. It's not bad. It's not uh, bad. I did find it interesting that they give you. Oh, they give you a um, a recommendation of one of these every thirty feet, <laughs> which I really don't think is necessary. Thirty feet. But, I'm. I'm just thinking about the size of my house. I'm like, like, so one of four, right? Really. Mm-hmm. Like maybe I put it like maybe put it on the other end of the house on the on the middle floor of the three, including the basement here, of course. Um, yes, we podcast out of the basement. Chilla doesn't. Chilla's on the Chilla, Chilla's on his own office. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the second floor. Uh, curious, and again, we've we've had a lot of these kind of mesh network kind of things, so it'll be interesting to see how that that works out. All right. Um, so yeah, I want to touch on a couple of these stories uh, real quick before we have to head out of here. Teddy Ruxpin. That thing's creepy looking. Do you remember <laughs> when the Furbies came back with their dreadful LED li- eyes and everything? 
man, oh man, this Teddy Roxman got the eyes. And it is kind of creepy. Um, uh, yeah, he's coming back. At what I, I think he has like four gigabytes of storage on him or something. Um, yeah, four, four gig hard drive that stores 40 stories. 40 stories. And, and, and so Teddy Roxman was the thing where it was basically a glorified tape deck, right? And you stuck it in his, you, you opened up his back and you stuck it in there. There was an ALF version of this too. Uh, and, and the mouth would move to the tape. And I believe like the mouth would only move when it was Teddy talking, right? Um, like, I think so, like there, yes. was, there was some um, intelligence to the cassette tape. Yes, a cassette tape to this. They would say, oh, this is the part where he, he needs to move his. But I think like you could also just put other tapes in and play music and, and it would react a little bit. And a little bit just like the mouth moving and, and there were other characters and and I think they could sort of talk to each other too. So, um, uh, I, you know, this is this is something Riz, Riz pointed out. I was like, Steel City Con, where there's a Teddy Ruxpin sitting at the booth across from us and just dead eyed at us. And it kind of freaked us out a little bit. Um, and this is going to freak us out even more. Look at those eyes move. <laughs> <laughs> like the one picture in the top looks like it's like snowflakes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like it it, it, it does like kind of change. The eyes are moving around a little bit. Um, uh, cool. They got the, the original Teddy Ruxpin there as well. Yeah, uh, uh, full color inter- animation. You can see behind uh, behind his shoulder there a, a little bit. Like there is the snowflakes and the eyes and the heart eyes and weird color pinwheels or something like that going on back there. So uh, yeah, the, the, there's a lot going on with this toy. <laughs> <laughs> so hey it makes sense it makes sense remove the cassette deck just like you remove the the, the quarter inch headphone jack remove the cassette jack deck and what other technology can we stuff into this thing right so uh so there you go you can get your uh, teddy rex pin on he's like tinier yeah he's like svelte tiny like she's holding up actually like the original teddy rex pin there as well and he's like half the size like he's like baby teddy interesting I think it's creepy. <laughs> it is super creepy. Look at that thing. You just imagine like that thing's like across the room and like the eyes just light up in the middle of the night and you're like, ah. um, there, there's a snowflakes going on too for you guys on video. Um, Teddy Ruxpin still alive. Apparently you can't kill him. Uh, zombie Teddy. Uh, anyways. Okay. Okay. We got some other stuff. I, I had this actually tagged for Friday night and I'm glad we didn't get to it. Cause I, I think this deserved a little bit more. How about, a self-driving dump truck. Uh, Komatsu uh, it, 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 it has this concept they're working on. It's a uh, autonomous haulage vehicle. It's 2,700 horsepower. You know, this kind of makes sense because if, if, if you're going to drop one of these on like a work site, it's only got so much it can do. So, like, hey, we put dirt in you and you take it over here. Repeat. I was wondering, so, so how do they figure that out? Like, how do they tell it where it needs to go? I guess it's programmed or someone programs yeah, yeah, it, it, it ahead of time. Prog- and it, then it, it, It's programmed. I, I'm sure this, this, this must work with, you know, we talked about uh, uh, drones in the past, so a video we actually did with Sorgatron Media, uh, that take a look at the telemetry of everything. So I, I, I'd imagine you can say, okay, this is, listen, we can do it on the uh, HTC Vive and mark out our area. I, I feel like just saying, okay, this is the space you can go. This is the space where you need to dump the thing. Um, don't go off the, the 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 left. I mean, this is all and this is all CG kind of uh, C- CG mockups at, at this point. But this is something that's in the works for them. Uh, considering what they do on the roads for like the self driving Uber, the Google car, I think this is fairly easy in comparison, right? Mm-hmm. The, the interesting thing they do bring up is is it it never has to turn around right because there's no there's no there's no cabinet <laughs> so there's no yeah. need or function for that it just needs to uh, uh, uh drive up to you it it, it, it dumps in and then it, it pulls back and dumps off like it, it becomes more efficient at that point when you have to take take out those weird things that we do because we need people driving it right mm-hmm just, they're, they're, yeah, so there's like really no front or back because it's always right. It's going just it's forward. just the direction it's going. It's an interesting metaphor for life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so like to Komatsu, 
putting together a self-driving hauler. Uh, it'll be interesting. Did, did I hear? I, I I thought I heard a story that um, um, Auto, I think it was called, the the guys that were doing the the uh, self-driving like delivery trucks. Uh, which I I know I I saw the 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 guy behind it. He 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 got. Uh, they got bought out by Uber, and now he's working on the autonomous self-driving car with Uber now, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, I I think they're still. I think like Auto is still trying to do the trucks too. Like they like they they still exist and are doing. They didn't just absorb the technology, I guess. Uh, and the guy, obviously, right? Um, so I, I don't know. That's, that's anecdotally, I, I thought I caught that story sometime this week. Somebody can tell me if I'm right or wrong uh, on that one. So, all right. Uh, I think we should just go down the line here real quick on things. First of all, Fuse is the first iPhone 7 head check, headphone jack case. So I, 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 I imagine this as like, think a Mophie that gives you your headphone jack back. This was inevitable. This was definitely inevitable. Maybe not the prettiest. I don't know. It kind of fits in, right? So my question is, and I didn't get to see Fuse. Okay, so at least uses it. The one thing that bothers me about the Mophies is that it doesn't use the lightning connector at the bottom. Mm-hmm. It switches that out to a to a micro um, USB. The few this fuse charges with the the same lightning cable, which I like because then if you have docks that you were using, it looks like this will work in there. Mm. I'm just going to say, as having the iPhone Seven for a little over a week, I I find this unnecessary. Now I don't know, man. I uh, talked. I had lunch with AJ a couple weeks ago, and uh, he had the Seven. And he, and he had the seven for like the day, right? I, I think he had just picked it up that morning, and uh, he was like, a, he was all excited to show me, like, oh yeah, this. And I don't think I'm even going to need the stuff because I already got Bluetooth headphones, and we talked about it here on the show, right? And then like we're sitting there, and he's just like, oh no, and I'm like, what? He had left the Bluetooth headphones back at his desk. He was actually leaving for the day after lunch, and wasn't going to be back until the morning, and didn't have another pair of headphones that would work with it. And oh, gee, other, I mean, I have, other than like, I, you know, other than using the adapter and having it, and I'm like, well, then you have headphones. You can get to work and have your headphones, right? He's like, yeah, but I hate cords. Well, the cord thing, then that he's gonna have, he's gonna have a problem no matter what. <laughs> he would have had a problem with the old, the old device, right, and, right, right. You know what I mean? It, the adapter to me, I mean, I've. I've actually forgotten my headphones more times than I've forgotten the head adapter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I don't use the, the the headphones out of the box, and I do use Bluetooth quite often in the gym. Um, for me, is where I I wire in. Um, but it, it's it's a non to me. It's a non issue. Even at home now, and I I did do it just because of work, and sometimes I'm on extremely long calls where a Bluetooth. Um, Bluetooth may not make it um, for the day. I actually went out and got the Apple dock and the back of the Apple dock. I don't know if you can see it there. Let me move this so I can see my camera. Um, The back of the Apple dock has the lightning port and a headphone jack. So there you go. If if you're stationary and you just want to plug in. Hey, man, there's options. Hey, man, there's options, right? Yeah, right? and I, like I said, I, I guess I just look at it as I, I have, I have yet to be impacted by the lack of the headphone jack. Elon Musk, according to Wired, announces his plan to colonize Mars and save humanity. I think he wants to do it by twenty twenty two. Yeah, he's uh, trying to make it a little affordable. Get you guys out there. Uh, it's going to do it in. I think they said sixty days, or am I thinking ninety? Um, and they'll do, they're going to do it in such a way that like, they will make sure you're entertained for the couple of months you're in space. So there you go. There you go. Um, Logitech's newest webcam is for live streamers. I think this is one that you shared last week. Yeah, I I shared this last week. Um, I'm hoping to get my hands on one. This does green screen in the, in the background automatically, uh, some early, uh, reviews are saying it's definitely high-end i5 or i7 processor required. It's doing all the heavy. It's doing all the heavy green screen work on the PC, mm-hmm. but it's actually doing the video compression on the device, like the H.264 um, and everything, right? Yep. 
that's all done on the device. So it doesn't peg your CPU for for anything video related other than that inserting the the green screen in there. So I'm curious about that because we use Wirecast here, right? And each webcam that I put on here, and these are Logitechs. These, I mean, you know, they're they're the HD and stuff, but they're still just Logitechs. Um, all that processing again, I have to watch my CPU when I when I connect too many of these things. So I'm wondering if that will help with with dealing with something like a Wirecast that that that, that program and the computer doesn't have to take that on or is it more kind of standard task? So that's something I want to look into. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, there's a new Mavic Pro drone that folds up and fits in the palm of your hand. I think I, Justine, was playing with this uh, a, a few days ago. Uh, check that out. That's over on The Verge. Again, we'll have the links uh, in the show notes uh, in there so you can explore things that we did not get to for the week. Chilla, is there any other big events coming up? Because we've been talking about Google coming up for so long. It feels like we're done. Are we done? <laughs> I don't think we're done. I think you're going to, I don't think they've been announced yet, but I think we're going to see a Microsoft smaller partner event. And I think we'll, everybody, all signs are pointing to, there's going to be another Apple event. Maybe those next So, books. so mm. yeah. And they, and they also, something passed through the FCC, which they can't, they're yeah. not hundred percent sure what it was. So yeah, like I, we'll, we'll I keep seeing those and I try to ignore them. Cause I'm like, eh, it could be a thing. I'll believe it when, I believe it when they tell me. I believe it. Uh, by the way, side note: um, the phrase "it just works" came up a lot at the Google event today. I, they they had a lot of throwbacks and and to me callbacks to to an Apple announcement. Yeah, it, yeah. from the from the structure and and you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock them for it. Um, it's a good philosophy. It's a good philosophy. There, it works. Um, Apple has a really good format and layout to their their conferences or their their announcements. Um, I, I thought it made I thought it they they flowed extremely well. I thought they flowed a little better than they did for I O. Certainly. Um, so I, I look forward to this type of announcement. It's also easier to digest. Yes. You don't have stuff panning all over the place and. I don't know. Some of the Microsoft ones, I feel like it's it's a bumpy road of, of information that you just get thrown at you um, with very little kind of slide or presentation piece. So, um, Multi-million I, dollar companies and, hey, still people too. Um, and and ho- hopefully they can get that because that's not something – when I think Google device, I don't typically think it just works. I think, mm-hmm. oh, let me fiddle with that. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned. Some uh, stuff coming up. We'll announce another. I think everybody came out to the Circuitron Media Coffee this past week. Chilla hanging out there. We did some fun green screen stuff. You probably saw oh, on our social did. media. Got that shared over. Hopefully, hopefully have have that together and launch for you guys. Uh, see exactly what we did down there uh, in the in the coming weeks as well as as uh, workflow allows. Basically, at this point, um, still trying to make sure all of our interviews get out on time and edited in nicely too. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, hey, guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks, Jolo John, who also said they need to make a grubby, which I think was one of the other Teddy Ruxpin characters, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, in there as well. Uh, Crazy Kraus Tragar, again, who joined us there Friday night for the uh, pod crawl in person. And as well as Wheels, our friend Wheels, rwalive.com, to see what they're doing over there. And uh, no, some really good, fun stuff tonight. Uh, live. AwesomeCast.net every uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Follow us on Twitter, AwesomeCast, Facebook. You need to really delete that uh, Google Plus in there. Nobody's, nobody's hanging out. Come on. Everybody's on Come Google on. Plus. Come on. Jeez. Jeez. Hey, so can I, if you got this this late in the show, you're, you're probably a super fan. Both of you. Um, I, because, I know Chilla has shared with me some interesting like people he's run into. Like, just say hi on Twitter because we're like it, it's 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 like I know you guys are out there, <laughs> <laughs> and and instead of being snuck up on in public <laughs> a little bit, um, no, just not uh, just say hi on Twitter. Uh, if you're like, hey, I got I got to the end of the show. Listen, you know, I just want to you know let's put some Twitter names and some some of you guys out there. Um, and and you know, I, I'm just just kind of out of curiosity. I just want to say what's up. You know, uh, so and thank you so much. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of good people listening, and 
and uh, and I really really do appreciate that. Thank you everybody that came out to the pod crawl this past week. Um, subscribe to the show, rate it. Patreon.com slash awesomecast if you want to support the show. We'll actually we're we're getting less aim at the graph goals very, very soon. So um yeah. Chilla. Chillatech.net. Yeah, another another show in the can, not not at the bar. We gotta we gotta bring it back to the bar sometime soon. We may we may have some things in the works. I I we're, we're experimenting with some of the other shows here doing some live stuff hopefully this month too. So um, also check out podcamppittsburgh.com. Um, we have another boot camp coming up later this month with the Beachview Library, um, where it's going to be intro to blogging with Amanda Narcissi of Bold Pittsburgh, I believe is going to be leading that one. And we have an evening with Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, an evening with PodCamp foodie event coming up at the end of the month. Again, stay tuned for details on that. There's a placeholder event right now, so you can save the date so you don't forget about it over at uh, the Facebook page for PodCamp Pittsburgh. Uh, so uh, uh, check that out. Check that out. And shout out to our friends over at Beyond the Menu. I believe it's beyondthemenupg.org. I think is the site. Maybe pgh.org. Also on Twitter. Uh, doing some good uh, kind of food discussions as well that we have been helping capture a little bit these first few weeks of that. So, all right, Chilla, thank you so much. You've been awesome. Thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.